you know we had to do it. We had to get all the Caymans together because we talk about them on the podcast so often. Sometimes on the podcast, I actually back off from recommending a Cayman because I know it's gonna be the car I want you to buy as the answer to getting your driving fix. Paul has owned two different generations of the Cayman. He's owned that first gen, the 987, and he currently has a 981 GTS. In fact, the one in this chute is his car. Now with the 718 generation, we have three different generations of the Cayman to discuss. They're all PDK transmissions, and they're all very different cars. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. The car I'm in is the Cayman R, or the hottest version that Porsche built of the 987, so we don't truly have a GTS. The stuff that gets refined and gets more in-your-face technology-wise in the later two generations is still right here in the pared-down hardcore version. It's so simple and so clean that I think this will age better and still be fine. This Cayman R is just a first-gen Cayman interior. The gauges are very readable, everything's very usable. You might not argue that it's luxurious, but it's very well-built and the materials are nice. But the fabric door pulls, I just, I like what these say about the driving experience. I like the connection between half street, half track, depending on what you go do with the car. This is the second generation Porsche Cayman, the 981. It's the greatest hits version. It's kind of the way you want to spec most of their cars. You might also suggest the GT4. It doesn't fit in this category. The GT4 is built for track use, really. Whereas a GTS, you can just relax and enjoy yourself. You can cruise. It is the high-speed Autobahn blasting car. As soon as you start driving this 981 Cayman, you're aware how much they've refined everything. Any hardened edges, any hardcore feel, it just made a little bit nicer. Show me an angle on this car that isn't the money shot. Dead front, dead rear, three-quarter, top view. Show me an angle that isn't delicious. Everything about the materials look and feel expensive. You can argue that this is the generation with too many buttons and things, and it just it's a little bit busy. I, I prefer it. I like it. The interior of this Cayman was revised along with every other Porsche of this era. It has become a nicer place to be. Of course, this one as a GTS is dipped in Alcantara and has ridiculous extras like painted vents. Along the way, your back hatch got bigger and the frunk is the same size it's always been. This is truly a Grand Tour cross-country car. This is the brand new Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. It's the first time they've released the GTS variant of the 718 Cayman. Technically, this is the 982 generation, but they added 718, so it's the 718 982. Yeah, the, the math is hard, I, I get it. But the biggest difference, of course, is the engine. This is a seismic change in the Porsche Cayman because it's now a turbo four. The 718 RSK car was from the late 50s, the mid to late 50s and it had a flat four in it. Visually, especially in the exact same sapphire blue color, you may have trouble telling these two GTS generations apart. There is refinement throughout, there's changes to the front end, you can see differences in the lights, and you can especially tell by the black bar that Porsche's putting on all their cars now, that's part of the rear light cluster. It's a little bit less voluptuous and a little bit sharper edged. I do actually really love the taillights on this car. I like the wing, I like the shapes. If I'm gonna find something, it's gonna be the instrument panel. Porsche has added texture that actually makes it seem more like an economy car than anything. If you're the kind of person that actually touches the dash materials, you'll find this is very nice to the touch, but look-wise, it feels like something right out of a GTI. The GTI is a $30,000 car, this is an $80,000 car. When you're busy checking boxes at Porsche, be careful. Not only will you make your car $100,000 without trying, they even let you pick exactly what you want the back to say. I want to put 911 on the back of a Cayman. Can I do that just for fun? Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft. Use the code EVERYDAY for free shipping in the U.S.
This Cayman R still represents the pinnacle of the analog era of the Porsche Cayman. It still has that 3.4 liter flat Porsche 6, and it has hydraulic steering. PDK was first available on Porsche cars in 2009, and you can spec the Cayman R either in the manual transmission or with a PDK. And it's such an argument. Do you want to extract lap times, or do you want to really connect to the car? Neither are a bad choice, but I'm actually glad that all three cars are PDK equipped because now we can tell the tuning. These are not acceleration monsters. The Cayman R and the 981 GTS make all their power above, we'll say, 5,500. That sound. I want that to be my ringtone. In sport mode, the PDK isn't quite as direct. There's a tiny pause, as if it's just waiting for gears to mesh. Like the two GTS that we have here, this has a slight power bump. It's up to 330 horsepower from the S's 320. It's not the quickest, zero to 60 in about four and a half seconds. Now that's not slow. For those of you that are used to the two second zero to 60 on paper, trust me, four and a half seconds from the seat feels pretty quick. It's giving you the tools, the recipe to go achieve something and find your personal best. Like Porsche does with all their GTS variants, this one has a slight bump over the Cayman S. 15 horsepower bump here, and it also has all the bells and whistles. Porsche stability management, all the Porsche drive modes, Sport and Sport Plus, Sport Chrono, many things that start with either P or Sport on the build sheet, okay? 340 horsepower, you think, how can that mesmerize you? It does. At certain points, you get bored of the speed, and at about 120 miles an hour, the car just starts to shrug and say, all right, are we, are we getting serious? Are we, are we gonna do this? It just makes all of its power way past 5,000, just like the Cayman R does. That's kind of where you're gonna wanna hang out anyway. The noise of this car is such an integral part of the driving experience. One place this GTS does a much better job than the 718 is throttle response. Because it is instantaneous, it's almost granular. I mean, you can move your foot a tiny little bit and you can sense changes in the engine, its dynamics and its voice. I could see you saying you bought this flat six because you like the way the throttle engagement is. I could actually go with you on that. You did it just for the noise? I don't know that that was the answer, but the engine, the way it delivers power, the way it interacts with you, that is brilliant. PDK is tuned differently. It's even jumpier and more on it when you're in sport mode in this car. It's every bit as intuitive as the prior version, but it is significantly smoother and faster. When the engine winds up, you think, okay, where's the power? And then it hits 6,000 RPM. Where did that power come from? There's levels to this car. As a result of that engine, this 981 Cayman will probably maintain its value better than the original 987s, and I submit to you, better than the 718s to come. Porsche has reset themselves with this car. They were kind of at the pinnacle of trying to add more power by tuning tricks to the 3.4-liter 981 engine. This car is now the Cayman with the four-cylinder. It's a turbocharged engine, flat four, 365 horsepower. The only other people to do a flat four cylinder, you may have thought about this, are Subaru. As a result, yes, there's a little bit of a Subaru engine note to the new Porsche Cayman. No, it doesn't sound like a Subaru. No, it doesn't sound bad. Subaru's flat four wasn't introduced in their compact passenger car until 1966. Subarus sound like Porsches not the other way around. Because this is a tiny little high-strung turbo, there's power anytime you put your foot to the floor. It doesn't have an instantaneous throttle response. Partial throttle is far less engaging than it is on the prior generation, but a significant throttle adjustment, and it just has more than that prior flat six did all the time. Ah, uh, that makes me giggle. The added power and the turbocharger torque has made this car even easier to drive. 
it's got a raw quality to it now because of the engine. But it's also an engine without personality. This is one of two things, quiet cruising and then blow your head off. And that happens in any RPM. Your 0 to 60 now has broken the four second barrier. This car with the PDK is a lightning quick car. And the Sport button and Sport Plus button have jumped off the console here, right here under the dial, in reminiscent of the 918 Spider. And now you just turn it to Sport mode and you think, all right, we're good. But there's a button right in the middle of this dial. And if you push it, it gives you 20 seconds of turbo overboost. <laughs> It gives me a dial here. It's counting down how many more seconds of overboost that I've got. I'm astounded. This car is now overwhelming the road. What I find fascinating is that only about 10% of Cayman buyers will opt for the manual. Even if you're not going to the track, you're pretty much just buying the PDK. The throttle response that you lost, you actually gained back in the interaction with the gearbox. And so if people say, well, the 718 is off because it's a four cylinder and therefore discounted because of the sound and the power, stop being babies about it. You're wrong. This is a brilliant car. Hello, cattle. Move. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Griot's Garage. Use the code every day for 10% off your order. Just before we started the shoot, there was a guy who rolled into the gas station where we were staging, and he said, nice car. What is it? Uh, what? How can you not know what this car is? How can these remain so undiscovered? For the price and for what you get, I think 911s are still too expensive. So here we are in Caymans that are lower priced and still offer Canyon Roads, GT car driving, fun sports car driving. I like small, lightweight, chuckable cars. The 911 has grown. Hello, deer. There you go. There you go. Yay, you. Oh, there's more of you. There's a lot of deer. Okay. All right. Good to see you. Yeah. Nobody hit anything. We're good. I'm a fan of small, lightweight, raw cars, and so the Cayman really is the best for me in the Porsche lineup. This car feels like you're eating asphalt by the yard, but it's getting out of the way and you're just feeling the road. You want to sample that corner at 82 miles an hour coming in? Sure, downshift and sample the road. I can almost taste the tar. It's a car that encourages you as a driver. What I love about the Cayman, it is the most docile and accessible mid-engine platform out there. It just doesn't really want to bite. This still feels like the light focus sports car of the group. This is a car that's about the interaction and about the level of information that it's giving you back. It far exceeds the other two in steering feel and theatrics about what's actually going on. Sports car manufacturers are going to continue to look for this hydraulic steering feel and try to replicate it in an electric steering rack. And I say to them, good luck. In this generation of the Cayman, the 981, Porsche transitioned this car to electric steering. Now, Porsche is one of the best at figuring out electric steering and making it feel really good, but there's an extra layer of information that is gone now. The initial steering feel isn't as good. I hate to tell you, and I hate to admit that, especially on camera, but it isn't. It's a little soft in comparison. That first bite is missing. It feels more like a 911, like a 991 in this car. This car actually feels significantly bigger than the 987. It isn't by much. I mean, the car's become a little bit more GT car and a little bit less hardcore sports car. The more you drive this, the less the steering handling issue is going to enter your mind. You're going to think that it's really crisp and sharp. It's brutal, hidden underneath a lot of refinement. It doesn't have the buzz, or the personality, or the theatrics of the 987. They've made a car that anyone can drive.
I'm astounded to say that this one makes the 981, the prior generation, kind of feel like a boat. There's more tipping, there's more of that initial turn in. This third generation Cayman didn't gain any steering feel. It's still an electric steering rack here. It definitely doesn't have the information from the wheels that was present in that first generation Cayman. Does that matter? It kind of depends on what you're looking for. I kind of miss having all the tire information in the wheel and feeling nuances when you change your steering angle. It doesn't take away the fact that this car is incredibly precise and dives for corners anytime you ask of it. It's right between the two cars. Interestingly, it feels like a, a refined Cayman R steering. That's amazing to me. So while I don't have a gain in steering feel here, I appreciate the fact that the car feels smaller around me. I feel like it's a little more chuckable, a little more precise into a corner than the 981. Caymans is like deciding who's the most in shape Olympic athlete. There's cars that are hotter and rougher and Lotus Elise is a great example. The steering feel is so far more direct. But then lurking deep inside this car is this brilliant experience. It is imperative that we rate these cars. We cannot come away saying, <laughs> well, if only we had these brakes and that engine and that dynamic and this steering feel. Oh, you don't want to Frankenstein them. I see Cayman. what you're saying. Yeah, we yeah, can't. yeah. We have to review them and rank them for where they are. Okay. I've actually reached the place where the 981 is kind of the boat of the bunch, and this is coming from me owning this car. I'm pleased to hear you say that, but surprised to hear you say that, because I drove all three and thought, the second gen feels like the biggest car here. Yes. A fast, luxurious, long distance cruiser, but it feels like the GT car of the bunch. And I wondered if you were gonna be mad at me because you <laughs> wouldn't agree. Yeah, you're here kind of right there with me on it. I had no idea the Cayman R drove so well and was so much better than the S. It's my number one choice. I actually don't know that it's revolutionized over the S. Well. This 987, the first gen, is the most analog of these three. And the yes, R is yes. everything just fine-tuned to be analog. I like the steering feel the best. I just Bit like of a the, power increase, too. Yes, I like the driver nice. interaction the best, and it's my number one as well. I have to go new one for number two. No kidding. 718, because dimensions-wise, there's really not much of a change. No, but no. Honestly, the third gen drives and feels smaller than the second gen. So I have to go Cayman R, brand new 718, and then yours. So sound and noise is not really in the equation for you? Ah, uh, okay, the sound, the sound problem. That is not quite the Porsche sound, but honestly, I think it's the better drive, so I end up with the 718 over the, uh, the second gen. For me, it's part of the driving experience, and by far, there's no question the 981 sounds the best of any of these cars. I agree with that, for sure. I'm at the R, but I do love the fact that this car coaxes you and dares you to come find the speed, yeah. come find the performance. Yeah. It's the most refined of all the cars here. For sure, for sure. Then I come to the 718 and I love so many things about it because as a consolation prize for taking away two cylinders, they've 911 eyes it with the steering <laughs> rack and the brakes off the 911S. And, yeah. and there's a rawness and an urgency to this car as if they looked back to the Cayman R and thought, we've got something here. We've got this moment in time car. We went to GT, we went to refined, and they've actually come back around mm -hmm. to what this kind of feels like in a modern way. Somehow the 718 drives smaller. I don't know why that's possible. I don't know it's how amazing. that makes sense. But yeah. come on, Caymans, yeah. four-star cars, what's your budget? Which one do you like? How much does <laughs> noise matter? You end up with a Cayman either way. I maintain that Caymans from the 987 generation, especially Cayman R's, will be more and more sought after. This backpack kind of feeling and the car gets out of your way. This first generation Cayman is the one that I would be most likely to buy, not just because it's the most affordable. I like the fact that there's a little more theatrics to I'm shifting and I'm turning and I'm telling you what I'm doing. And this driving experience, the levels that I have to go hunting for, are what keep me coming back to the 981.
This car doesn't win for me because it's a little bit too refined, honestly. It hides its speed too much. I'm not quite as involved in the conversation of speed as I would like to be. It's got a raw quality. It's got more directness to the feel here. And it's got the punch now. It's got that ah, right in your ribs. It's that sensation of a slightly smaller car that makes me pick this generation Cayman over the one prior. You can find great products for your car at Covercraft.com. Plus, free shipping for our audience with the code EVERYDAY.